So Tank Davis, everybody knows, he's the ace side in, in, when it, in, at, at 135, right? Now, Tank Davis has been, you know, a knockout artist for most of his career. And at 135, at 135, I'm talking about lightweight division. What straps, what real straps does Javante Davis hold? He holds a Reggie strap at 140. Uh, he did hold a real strap down at 130 pounds when he, I think he fought Pedraza down there. But I think he, he vacated that, right? So he vacated that strap. And now, uh, he is a Reggie belt holder, I believe, at 135 pounds. And uh, I believe he won that strap after it was a vacant strap. He fought Yoriokas Gamboa for that belt, right? So, take is the WBA, like, uh, the world title holder, right? But we know we got another guy, the real king of 135, Devin the Dream Haiti, who holds the WBO, WBA, IBF, and the WBC super the real belts he's the king and i really talked about this on, on the short that i made dev is the official king of 135 but for some reason devin is not going to be an a side if he fights tank davis what does that really tell you about boxing when you really think about this for a minute what does that tell you about the sport it tells you popularity reigns over legacy that's what I get from it because if Tank Davis had all the belts, he it wouldn't matter because he would he would need the belts to be the A side because he's already the A side. Why is Tank Davis the A side? Well, they say he's the A side because he sells, he put asses in seats, pretty much. He's the he's the guy that carries all of the pay per views and all this other stuff or. He's the one that makes the fight the big name. He gets the knockouts. Everybody wants to see Tank. So that means he is the A-side. So pretty much the sport is basing the A-side only on popularity rather than accolades. It's kind of sad though. Because it's like, even with Devin, man, he was he was the belt holder. Um, well, he fought Cambosos for the belts, right? He had his one strap. Cambosos had his strap so pretty much wasn't cam bolsters the a side at one time at 135 because he, uh, uh, when it comes to him and dev that's understandable but when it comes to devin and tank if they was to fight right now with tank having that that, that reggie bullshit belt and it wouldn't matter one bit because tank would still be the a side why because a lot of it got to do with floyd mayweather a lot of it got to do with floyd his floyd's um Floyd Mayweather is attached to Tank, man. You know, rather you like it or not, I don't care if Tank does his own thing. Everybody's going to associate uh, Tank Davis with Floyd Mayweather. That's one of the things. Now that I look back, you know, when it comes to, like, A-side, I believe when Floyd, when he fought, was it, the WBC belt, he fought Oscar De La Hoya, and he won. Oscar De La Hoya was the man. He was the, he was the A-side, you know what I'm saying? But it's like, now we're in a new era where the belts don't even matter no more, man. Like, people put in work to get these belts, man. Rather, people don't like the competition these dudes face to get the belts or not. They put in work to get these belts. And I think it's like a slap in the face. And it kind of, like, devalues the belts, bro, when you really think about it. All right, you got Errol Spence, for instance. You got Terrence Crawford. That's understandable. Errol Spence, the A-side. He got the most belts. Bud got one belt. And in division... He put in more work than uh, he he put in more work. He got three belts. He put in more work than Terrence Crawford. Understandable. Tank Davis ain't put in more work. What has Tank Davis did at 135 to be the A side? He ain't put in more work than Devin Haney, bro. He ain't beat nobody. It's, that's fucking crazy, bro. When you really think about this shit, that's why Dev need to just do his thing, make everybody bow to him. He's the king. Y'all niggas, y'all want this belt? Y'all gonna do what I say, or we ain't gonna fight. I don't care if people call it a duck. Call it what you want. I'll be like, listen, same way Tank made everybody bend and fold for them. He made Ryan Garcia bend. Cool. Ryan didn't have no belt. Tank with the A side, no doubt. He made Mario Barrios was the champion at 140. How you make a champ at a division you ain't in, 
even if it was a Reggie champ, he was the champ. You made him bend and fold for you when you came up to fight him. Shit crazy. So Dev got to pull that same shit on these cats. Like, bro, I'm going to fuck how many dudes you whooped on, knocked out, how much seats you do this and that, how many asses you put in seats. I got the belts, dude. That's why you fighting me, right? You just said everybody, you coming for them belts. All right, so the belts mean something, then, then you motherfuckers bow down to me. You're going to take my motherfucking, uh, my policy is going to reign here, you know? But, hey, what do I know, right? I'm just little, I'm just little old rebel like boxing. That's just how I look at it, man. Why the fuck is Tank the A-side, bro? What has he fucking done? If you want to talk about the seats and the selling and all that shit, you want to get into that, if that's what makes boxing, fuck it, cool. Then Tank is the man. But when it comes to the straight legacy and, and, and fighting motherfuckers and, and putting, risking it, fighting real fights, Devin. Devin is that dude, period. That's how I see it. It's Rebel Life Boxing. Catch y'all later, and I'm off this. Peace.